Hello everyone, it's Deborah from Attic Lane. Welcome to this video. First of all, I want to say thank you very much to everybody who commented on the previous video where I was asking your opinion about monthly greeting cards or um, an extra subscription or um, do we look at some journaling and the overwhelming response has come back uh, to look at some journaling. So that's what we're going to do and we're just going to take it step by step. I'm going to show you what I've learned about making junk journals and we'll learn together. So I've got some books that I want to show you but just as a little quick background if you've come at this video from fresh what prompted this conversation about journaling is a journal that I made uh, myself to use when I was going on holiday recently and I used this journal to capture memories sure. and to cap capture textures and moments. So for example this is um, a little envelope that contains a story about a nice breakfast that we had when we were camping. It, it's capturing a moment, it's, the breakfast is immaterial, although it was pretty good, but um, actually this is about the memory, it's about that special morning, waking up, hearing birdsong, and it's all captured in here. I've made um, some short notes on, uh, on a piece of paper and I've put a little photograph on the front so that I remember that time. Um, this is a bookmark that I made before I went. I wanted it to, to use in a, in a book that I was reading that I took with me on holiday and I wanted to keep that as a memento so that's in there as well. And there's lots of uh, receipts that I kept from places that we went and so we were exploring what it was, what use a junk journal was, how was it different from a normal journal and you can see there's quite a lot of memories in there but it's not in chronological order there's no matting and layering uh, everything is pretty random and a junk journal allows you to be as random as you want and I think a junk journal what I'm discovering is I think it reflects the moment in a more tactile way perhaps than just a standard uh, photo album or just an ordinary photo, uh, an ordinary album where you've you've got your your photographs and you've got your maybe your written text to tell you what the photo is about. But this this way of capturing memories, um, I really like. So we're going to explore that together. And I thought, where do I start? Where do I start telling uh, my story about junk journaling and how I use them and how I make them? And I thought, well, if I'm thinking, where do I start? I'm sure a lot of people must be thinking that. So where I started some time ago was with uh, charity shops and books. So books form sort of the bedrock, books and cardboard, they form the bedrock of making your junk journal. They are the foundation for your junk journal. So I'm showing you three books here that I got in a charity shop because I want you to understand how cheaply I've done this. Um, and that's the whole point. It's, it's fun. It's a junk journal. So this book is beautiful. This cost me two pounds. This is about wildflowers and it's got lots of beautiful images in it. So if you were doing a botanical journal or a nature journal, this is exactly the sort of thing that you want. Um, I have gutted uh, some of the pages. So what happens to gut those pages, what you do is you find this place in the book where lots of pages cluster and then find the centre of those pages and you will see that there are some threads holding them in position and I've already cut the threads so all you need to do then is release the papers you see there and the paper will come out in one piece as it was originally put into the book so it's it's a sheet of paper and in some of these some of these books are so old um, uh, one in this pile dates from 1924. I think it's often it's only memory that's holding those pages together. They've been linked together for such a long time. Now you have a page that you can use in your junk journal and you can either use this as an insert into your into your journal or you can use uh, the images alone. If you think the images are so pretty that you'd want to use them again you could photocopy them and that way you keep the original. So when I was looking at books that I, I thought would be most useful, I knew I wanted a book that had images in it, so that fits that requirement. I knew I wanted um, a dictionary, so that's what this book is. So this is a dictionary of quotations, 
and it's it's big it's a big book and I wanted it to be a big book as well so that uh, these are a nice size for a, a junk journal I'm, I don't think I'm likely to make a journal that's that's bigger than than this page so I know that I can always use these and it's it's a lovely big thick fat book with um, I mean even in here there are some some fun sayings so I could even if there was something that was particularly appropriate to a journal that I was making I could cut out uh, the relevant quote I could just use my scalpel and uh, and cut one of those out and I could stick it on a tag perhaps oh tags we're gonna come to tags we're gonna come to tags but not in this video but we're gonna come close so I have my book of images I have my book of quotations and I have a book of music music sheets look very very pretty in a junk journal they mix things up and they're they're lovely to use one thing to be aware of though these books are the older books and the dictionaries as well the paper isn't always necessarily very thick so it can be quite fine it can be quite soft so just be aware of that when you're planning your journal um, if you are planning your journal I mean I must admit I'm a bit random I just like to stick it in and see if it looks nice but what I've learned this is what I've learned because I'm, I'm trying to um, share some ideas with you is I've learned that if I want to attach a paper clip uh, and let's say I want to add something to my paper clip, here's a receipt, I'm going to show you this in a minute, um, then I want my paper to be strong enough at the top to be able to take that paper clip without the fear of me when I pull it away ripping through the paper. The other thing I want to be careful of is that if I choose to colour these papers, if I want to ink these papers, that um, the ink can sometimes saturate the paper and weaken it a little bit in your journal. So those are all just things to be aware of. It's no biggie. This is a book that dates from uh, 1924 and it cost me three pounds. This was expensive. What an expensive book. <laughs> But so many, uh, so many options and choices. So I've given myself a really good selection of of book pages to use in my in my journaling. That's where I started. Now the other thing that I found in charity shops. Oh, there was so much. They are such a good source of material. I found fabric. Now, when I say I found fabric, um, I found this. This is. Um, a cardigan. It's quite a nicely made cardigan actually. Um, and it's a sort of, it's a crochet cardi. But the reason I bought this was for the beads. And there are lots and lots, there are loads and loads of beads on there. And I've started, a box somewhere, where I've started trimming off uh, those beads and I'm collecting them in a little box and I've just done one of these patterns so that that little box of beads there is just one of those um, designs within the cardigan and there are loads of them um, they're, they're all around the base so I'm going to get loads and loads and loads of beads from that so when you go um, if you're in a charity shop and you see something like this it might not necessarily be something that you'd buy to wear oh and look there are double rows of beads all the way around the neckline as well I mean it's just it, it, it's just beads it's just beads and potentially I could use this little bit here uh, for lace if I wanted if, if that will work out well when you go into a charity shop um, don't look at the garment or the fashion look at the fabric and see if there's anything on there that you could use so this was a great find I think this cost me about two pounds this little cardigan the other thing I found was a skirt. This is um, a cheapy store brand of skirt, but it's got a zip which I can I can cut out and use, and it's also got a beautiful fabric. I, I I've always liked blue and green tartan, and when I bought this, uh, this must have been about six months ago, I had in mind making a Scottish themed journal and that's what I've been working on most recently and this sort of fabric is ideal because I can cut this skirt down cut away where the seams are and I've got a patch of a big patch of fabric um, for about pound fifty, I think and you can see what that's doing to the lights <laughs> it's uh, it's really playing with the color balance there this is a lovely tartan um, go for a big size if you can get it you'll get more fabric <laughs> that's just my thrifty <laughs> my thrifty tip for the day um, 
there's a lot of fabric in this zone. It's, it's beautiful. It's lovely and soft. For my Scottish journal, I don't want it to be a shortbread tin sort of, um, you know, stereotypical uh, Scottish themed journal. I wanted it to have textures and colours that I remember from growing up there. So Scotland isn't a country you would associate with bright oranges or blues. It is this sort of very, very soft, smoky, bluey grey as mist rises over the lochs. And these browns are like mountains. The, 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 when you see the sun moving across the mountains, it's, they change colour all the time. You, you rarely see the mountain the same way. And these, these browns and these darks here just reflect the differences that you can get in the mountain ranges. And I, I love the colours in this. And I, I've used them uh, in a journal cover. But this video isn't about showing you that journal. That's for later. That's for later. So there's an idea of where you can get um, some fabric from. Now, the other thing that you can use for your basic supplies is cereal boxes. Um, I have also got a piece of corrugated card here. This came in some packaging and I've saved it because I like corrugated card a lot. And you can distress that and you can paint it and you can do lovely things to it. So that's there as well. But I've saved one of the cereal boxes from the cupboard and I've saved all of the, the panels as well. So that's the outside of the box and that's the inside of the box. So that's perfect. So we can use the inside of the box for writing things or uh, for inking onto. And we can just cover up the outside of the box, that's okay. I can show you how to do that. So we've got lots of cardboard where, there, I mean, you can see that, that will make, if you folded that in half, that's probably perfect size for a journal. So you're, you're halfway there. And then, so if you took uh, the inside, if, the, if you made this seat inside and you wanted to change out that cover on the outside, that's when you bring in your fabric and um, you can cover over all of that, all of that design, hidden, gone away. The other thing that you can save from your cereal boxes is the interior bag. Now this is a little bit like glassine, you know those uh, crinkly, creamy bags, I don't know what else to call it, but those, those bags uh, are made from a material called glassine and it's sort of a bit plasticky and it's sort of uh, shiny and it's got a smooth surface well you can use this bag if you don't have any of that stuff kicking around you can use one of these bags and I'll show you how to do that as well in one of the upcoming videos I've got a plan I've got a plan for how we're going to do this so don't worry this one is just about showing you what materials you can start with in addition to all of those wonderful freebies I thought, what if you were just looking around your house? What could you find around your house that you could use? You could use string. I use this um, a lot because I'm a lazy crafter and it's got a little notch on there so I can just pull it out and cut it and that's perfect. You can use old family photos. Um, if you don't want to use the original, photocopy it and then you'll, you'll always have the original but you've got something you can work with as well. Paper clips are always good. You can use them for attaching things into your journal or you can embellish them and we'll do that too. You can gather these pins. These are nice with the rounded ends. These are supplied on some clothing companies' uh, clothing and they hold on the, the washing instructions or maybe the, uh, the size and the details. And I always keep those because I just think they're very pretty pins and they're very useful uh, in journaling. Keep receipts. It might seem really crazy, it might seem completely irrelevant, but keep your receipts because they're a nice, that's your personal ephemera. You can buy ephemera, you can buy packs of it online, and ephemera means just printed material, uh, usually vintage, but you don't have to go and buy it if you keep your own little bits and bobs. These are special to you. This is, um, this is a card I picked up from a chocolate shop in Germany because, because because they made lovely, these beautiful people make wonderful chocolate. So I, I, I have this, and this is something that I can use in my, in my journaling. I've also got um, some lace. So 
on one of my foraging trips <laughs> I bought some lace and I it was horrible when I got it, it was all manky, it was all dusty, it was discoloured, it was nasty, I picked up a piece of cardboard there um, but when I washed it it's, it's lovely lace, it's really pretty so I can use that. I also have uh, some uh, stretchy lace, I've got that bit of cardboard again, I've got stretchy lace Ding. but um, that's uh, I can I can either use it gathered like that which from my Scottish journal actually makes me think of kilts, it's like the folds in a kilt or I can um, I can expand it, maybe I could stitch it and it would stay expanded might have to experiment with that. You can use stamps, ribbons, obviously you'll need things like scissors and glue but rather than rush out and buy a whole load of supplies I think you could probably find a lot of what you need to get started around the house and if you're a crafter then you'll have a lot more speciality supplies that you can pull in as well. Once you've assembled your very basic um, items such as your papers and fabrics and threads there's all kinds of other things that you can add into the mix. Some of these you may have, some of them you might feel inspired to go and find online if you choose to. This is just a very random selection but I'm thinking about things like stencils where you can use them to make lovely textures and, and colours. This is a tag that I've made using this particular one and I will show you how to make this tag in one of the upcoming videos. There's inks, there's downloadable printables, these are Scottish scenes which I've found and downloaded. You can use die cuts, this is a die cut of a stag's head, this is a little foam dabber that will help put ink through the stencil, I've got a corner rounder here, I've got a little hole punch here and I've got a big word stamp here as well. All of these extra things uh, that you can use to add interest and dimension to your junk journals. If you don't have any of these things, don't let it stop you. There's lots that you can make without needing all of this paraphernalia and I'm going to show you some of the things that we can make in the next video. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me again soon and that we'll see each other on the next video. Take care.